It is uh, Sunday, the 22nd of January, 2017. It's uh, now the third Sunday in a row that I've uh, engaged in my alternative spiritual practice of protesting against uh, Unitarian Universalist injustices, abuses, and hypocrisy. And uh, I think we may try to uh, keep uh, protesting uh, more often than not this year because it's the 175th anniversary of the Unitarian Church of Montreal and so they will be uh, you know seeking to promote themselves and so on there, there's no doubt going to be some uh, activities and, and so on <clears throat> that they will want to be attracting the public to their so-called Unitarian Church, which is neither Unitarian in the original sense of the word and not really a church in any uh, traditional sense of the word either. And I'm not the only person to say that. In fact, uh, Reverend Ray Drennan uh, actually tried quite hard to have the name uh, Unitarian Church of Montreal, also known as the Church of the Messiah, legally changed and, and removing the word church from the name. Uh, he wanted to change church to something like congregation or community. Oh look, it says our spiritual community welcomes, nurtures, inspires. It doesn't say our church, does it? Yeah. Um, so, so there we go. Um, by the way, this is the uh, mission statement of the Unitarian Church of Montreal. And I don't know about you, but one thing I've noticed about it is that it has zero moral and ethical content in it. It really says nothing about you know, what the so-called spiritual community of the so-called Unitarian Church of Montreal actually welcomes, nurtures, inspires, and challenges. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is that uh, at least in theory, uh, the spiritual community known as the Unitarian uh, Church of Montreal could in fact welcome uh, some very unpleasant things. It could in fact nurture some very unpleasant things. It could in fact inspire <clears throat> some very unpleasant things. And it could challenge good things. Um, you know, together, Montreal Unitarians could take action in the world that's unethical, immoral, borderline criminal, actually criminal, uh, just plain evil, and uh, batshit crazy, for example, you know? Um, so, I find it interesting how, how incredibly vague this uh, so-called mission statement is. Um, we're just going to put up my picket sign that fell down here. I see some people uh, approaching and uh, <laughs> we shall uh, see what goes on. This is uh, one of the younger members of the congregation who has in the past uh, taken <clears throat> action in the world by uh, erasing my chalk slogans that protest against <clears throat> child sex abuse committed by Unitarian Universalist ministers and the fact that the uh, Unitarian Universalist Association has falsely accused me of the uh, criminal act of uh, blasphemous libel for blogging about Unitarian Universalists who've actually been charged, tried and convicted <clears throat> of what the Unitarian Universalist Association's Canadian attorney describes as such despicable crimes as pedophilia and rape. So in an effort to intimidate me into removing uh, blog posts that tell the well-documented truth about such despicable crimes as pedophilia and rape committed by certain Unitarian Universalist ministers, to say nothing of certain Unitarian Universalist Sunday school teachers, to say nothing of certain Unitarian Universalist uh, you know, lay leaders who are neither clergy nor necessarily uh, Sunday school teachers, but are nonetheless uh, <coughs> prominent members of the church. Um, you know, this, this uh, was the Unitarian Universalist taking legal action in the world that was of a seriously immoral, seriously unethical, borderline criminal, if not actually criminal. Uh, 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 did I say evil? Yes, evil. Uh, and, and yes, bad shit crazy. I mean, what are Unitarian Universalists doing in the 21st century accusing anyone of any form of blasphemy for any reason whatsoever. Unitarian Universalists 
have, or perhaps I should say had, a centuries-old tradition of opposing blasphemy laws. As recently as 2010, the Unitarian Universalist Association signed on to an amicus brief. An amicus brief, if you don't know what that is, it's basically a petition to the court, petition to a court or a judge regarding a, uh, <clears throat> regarding a, a court case or whatever. Um, they, you know, in alignment with this tradition of opposing blasphemy laws that goes back centuries, uh, the Reverend Dr. Peter Morales led a UUA administration signed on to a amicus brief that opposed a uh, restaurant or a bar in Pennsylvania being accused of blasphemy because it had the word hell in its name. And the amicus brief <coughs> concluded in saying that uh, all blasphemy laws are unconstitutional. Um, and yet, <coughs> in 2012, two or so years later, because uh, it was in mid-2012 that this happened, and uh, I'm not quite sure when the amicus brief was signed in, uh, in uh, 2010, but yeah, basically less than two years later, and I suspect, I suspect as a result of signing on to this amicus brief and going, oh, wait a minute, I wonder if Canada has a blasphemy law. Maybe we can, you know, accuse Robin of blasphemy and that will intimidate him into removing blog posts that talk about our pedophiles and rapists. I suspect very much that the act of signing on to this amicus brief, which uh, Executive Vice President uh, Kathleen K. Montgomery was responsible for. Um, it's effectively, I think it inspired, if we can use that word, um, Kathleen K. Montgomery and by extension the Unitarian Universalist Association to look into you know, whether or not Canada had a blasphemy law and to abusively misuse Canada's blasphemy law in clergy sex abuse cover-up legal bullying that sought to intimidate me into removing blog posts that tell the truth about Unitarian Universalist pedophiles and rapists. Pedophiles and rapists that aren't just people who are, you know, rumored to be pedophiles and rapists, not just people who were suspected of being pedophiles and rapists, but people who were actually charged, tried, and convicted of such despicable crimes as pedophilia and rape and sentenced to jail terms and all this was reported in newspapers and yet the Unitarian Universalist Association wants to keep this out of the public eye as much as possible I thought it'd be a really really good idea to challenge oh look there's that word again challenge challenge my freedom of speech challenge my truth-telling about Unitarian Universalist uh, clergy sex abuse which includes but is by no means limited to such despicable crimes as pedophile, pedophile and rape. By ta together, together, yes, this was a bunch of Unitarians at the UUA conspiring, if I can use that word, together to take immoral, unethical, borderline criminal, just plain evil, and quite frankly, batshit crazy legal action in the world. So as we can see, this, this mission statement of the Unitarian Church of Montreal is worthless. It means nothing. It, it, it has, says nothing at all about what the Unitarian Church of Montreal actually welcomes. It says nothing about what it actually nurtures. It says nothing about what it actually inspires. It says nothing about what it challenges. And it says nothing about the kind of actions that together Montreal Unitarians take in the world. It says nothing about what those actions are. Uh, and I can assure you that some of those actions are immoral. Some of those actions are unethical. Some of those actions are borderline criminal. Some of those actions are actually criminal. Some of those actions are, in fact, evil. I'm not saying they're the worst evil in the world, but they certainly fit the description of evil if you go look evil up in a dictionary. And yes, some of them are, quite frankly, crazy, insane, and uh, yes, bat, bat shit crazy, like so incredibly crazy, so beyond belief, if I can borrow a phrase from Reverend Dr. Peter Morales, that it, it just, it's just incredible. 
Uh, so on that note, we're going to uh, start up our little protest here, that little monologue. Um, but it just goes to show that, you know, Unitarian Universalists, they say all this nice stuff about themselves. Uh, and usually they're more specific, you know, and you, usually they talk about, you know, justice and equity and compassion in human relations. They talk about uh, uh, free and responsible search for truth and meaning. Well, I just engaged in a free and responsible search for the truth and meaning of the Unitarian Church of Montreal's mission statement and proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that it's basically meaningless. You know, it doesn't really say anything of any substance about the Unitarian Church of Montreal. And in fact, it can be interpreted in a very negative light. It can be interpreted in the light that I just uh, presented. Um, so it is, as I said, uh, Sunday the 22nd of January. And it's the third Sunday in the month that I've... Oh, wait a minute. One, two, three... No, it's the fourth, I guess. Um, <coughs> fourth Sunday so far. <clears throat> so yeah, I protested on first, protested on the eighth, protested on the fifteenth, uh, and today's the twenty second. So that's four Sundays in a row. Um, you know, I, I generally protest two or three times a month and not necessarily in a row, you know. Um, um, <clears throat> you know, I don't feel the need to protest, you know, absolutely every Sunday. If I have something better to do on a particular Sunday, well, I'll, I'll do that. Um, I've got such a long track record of protesting that if I skip a, a Sunday or two, it, it really has negligible impact in, in terms of, you know, missing something because, uh, I got basically the better part of 20 years worth of protests under my belt and uh, a lot of the more recent ones, you know, certainly since 2011, 2012, uh, most of the uh, protests can be seen on YouTube, so they're preserved. Anyone can go on YouTube and, and have a look. You just uh, search for Unitarian Church of Montreal and you'll find them. Um, <clears throat> so. Uh, Anyhow, we shall uh, continue to circulate here, just uh, having a little look around the neighborhood to see uh, what's what. In my right hand, I have a picket sign that says uh, unsafe sect, and uh, it no longer has a uh, question mark uh, softening the blow. When I first uh, made the unsafe sect uh, picket sign, it had a, a question mark. So it's good day, sir. <laughs> guy getting a little, getting a little smile from my unsafe uh, sect picket sign there. The guy, yes, he understood the play on words there. I don't think I need to explain it to anyone. Uh, but just in case, you know, there's a few people out there who haven't quite figured it out. It's obviously a play on the term safe sex. And it obviously alludes to sexual misconduct on the part of Unitarian Universalist ministers to say nothing of Unitarian Universalist Sunday School teachers, etc. Um, and that's about as far as I went in terms of sexual misconduct. Uh, because the clergy misconduct that I experienced here at the Unitarian Church of Montreal, to say nothing of elsewhere, uh, was of a non-sexual nature. Um, I spoke about clergy abuse in broader terms, so so I didn't narrow it down to uh, clergy sexual abuse because I was protesting against all forms of clergy abuse, both sexual and non-sexual. So my signs would have reference to abuse of clergy or clergy abuse and so on. And, and as I said, unsafe sect is is probably the only picket sign that. Uh, alluded to sexual misconduct and, and didn't actually explicitly state it. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, you know, this, this was basically how I protested right up until 2012. And, and even after, even after being falsely accused of blasphemous libel by Unitarians 
trying to hide pedophilian rape in the Unitarian Universalist uh, spiritual community, if we want to use that term. Um, um, sorry, I got distracted by the picket sign that got blown down here. Uh, okay. That's it. There, there was no, no, you know, clear, obvious reference to sexual misconduct on my picket signs. Now the blog's another matter. I, I did speak about some specific cases of clergy sexual misconduct. But I guess the point I wanted to make was was that you know as a result of complaining about non-sexual clergy misconduct, verbal abuse, psychological abuse, slander, libel, abuse of power, that kind of thing, abuse of authority, um, you know, and essentially having my complaints uh, dismissed out of hand by the Unitarian Universalist Association, uh, you know, I spoke to people who are advocates for victims of clergy misconduct in the Unitarian Universalist uh, uh, religious community. There's a small number of people, a vanishingly small number of people who are concerned about clergy misconduct issues in the uh, Unitarian Universalist uh, religious community, and, and the interesting thing is, is they're concerned almost exclusively with sexual misconduct. It's, it's like non-sexual misconduct isn't even considered to be misconduct. Like basically a Unitarian Universalist can do almost anything of a non-sexual nature and get away with it. Um, there's only a, a few things where where a Unitarian Universalist minister can get into trouble for non-sexual misconduct. One of them is plagiarizing the sermons of other Unitarian Universalist ministers. Uh, I saw one particular Unitarian Universalist minister, I don't, remind, I don't mind uh, naming him, his name was Donald Cameron, and he was found to have